Welcome to Country Cow Designs, I'm Jo and in this video I'm going to show you how to print your pattern, how to piece together your pattern pieces and how to cut your fabrics. So the first thing that you need to do is to print your pattern pieces. Now that includes your cutting chart. On your cutting chart, if, you, if you're looking at this on the computer, it's going to tell you which pages you need to print. The cutting chart is always at the end of the instruction so that everything you need to print is all together. So this tells you to print pages 16 to 23 at actual size or 100% with no scaling. Now what that means is that when you're printing it you need to make sure it's not scaling it to fit and that it's not printing at a different percentage. So we strongly recommend using Adobe Acrobat software to print your patterns. Um, that's because if you print on a mobile phone or a tablet or if you print using a web browser you can run into problems where it automatically scales it to a different size and then all your pattern pieces are going to be slightly different to what they should be. So I would definitely recommend using Adobe Acrobat. It's free to download and you can then print it from your computer. Also bear in mind that we include letter and A4 copies of all of our patterns. So when you buy our pattern you'll receive two copies. Now um, a lot of people aren't aware that there's actually two sizes of paper in the world. So in uh, most countries we use A4 paper which is what I'm using here. This is based on the metric measurement system. However in America and Canada they use letter paper which is a different size. It's just, it's just slightly different. If you're printing using the different size paper sometimes you can find that stuff prints it, it like stretches it to fit so make sure that you're using the correct file so you'll see in the file name one will be called letter paper for use in the USA and Canada the other file will just be called a4 paper for use outside the USA and Canada so just make sure you've got the correct file before you start printing that will just make sure that it prints out correctly the first time so before you cut anything, check your test square. Every pattern will have a test square. This is two inches by two inches or five centimeters by five centimeters if you're using metric. And what you want to do is just check that that fits perfectly. Now, if it's slightly off, that can mean that you're printing at say 97 or 98% or 102% and it will throw all of your pattern pieces off. So just be aware of that. Now to save you in printing, we shade all of the rectangular pieces. So when you buy the pattern, it will have the height and width measurements for every single pattern piece. And the ones that are shaded are rectangles. So you don't need to print the paper for those. You can just cut them out from the rectangles. If you want to print the rectangular pattern pieces, just pay attention to this bit here. It will tell you which pages to print for rectangular pattern pieces because we're aware that some people do prefer to print the rectangles too. So all of your pattern pieces include seam allowances and you can use this cutting chart as a guide. So all of our patterns have this cutting chart. It will tell you if you need to add woven interfacing for certain fabrics and things like that. It will tell you which pattern piece is which. So the top panels, that's A. Main panels are B, so we're looking at B here. Now on the actual pattern, rather than saying sample, it will again have the measurements for you. The measurements, if it's not a rectangle piece, it will be the widest point and the highest point. So that if you're block fusing, you're interfacing, then you know how much fabric you need. So once you've checked your test squares and you're happy with that, you can cut out your pattern pieces. So I recommend using a rotary cutter, but have a separate one that you use just for paper patterns and one for your fabrics because you don't want to mix these or else you're going to blunt them. So you're just cutting along the solid exterior lines. Where a pattern piece is too large for one piece of paper, 
you will have separate pieces. Now, this one would say B1. This is a um, prototype pattern, so it's not gonna be absolutely finished yet. So this will say B1 and it will say join to B2. This is B2 and it joins to B1. And you can see that the symbols match and B3. So that's one entire piece. Now on the centerpiece, what I've done is I have just left this um, extra piece of paper here. The reason I've done that is because it just makes it slightly easier to overlap. It means that we've got like a little bit of overlap. So I'm gonna match up the arrows and the marks and all the edges like so. And then I'm just gonna tape it in piece, place. Now, if you don't wanna leave this overhang, that's fine. It's just purely, um, some people find that this makes it slightly easier to fit because having a little bit of overhang. So I'm gonna place both of them like this, match them up nice and neat, and then sellotape them in place. So if you haven't left this extra piece on, then you would just butt these up against each other. You just match them up the same and sellotape them. You don't need that extra piece there. It's just that a lot of people um, have commented that they prefer to do it that way because it, it just feels nicer, I suppose. Once your pattern piece is assembled, you might think that this measurement isn't correct, but this measurement corresponds to the entire pattern piece. So if it's a cut on fold, then this measurement will be the whole piece once it's cut on the fold. And it should match up with the same measurement right here. So that's what this measurement represents, the entire piece once you've cut it out of the fabric. Once all of your pattern pieces are assembled, it's a lot easier to use the cutting chart as you go. So you can see this tells us that we need two. So we've got exterior fabric first. Um, so you can work your way through each pattern piece and then you can tick it off after you've cut them out of your fabrics. It's just a really good way of making sure that you don't lose track. It does also mention on each pattern piece what you're cutting out. But for me, this is definitely my preferred method. I just feel like it's much easier. It's also great if you want to plan fabrics. So if I'm thinking, um, yeah, I want to make this out of the cork and I want to make this out of my cotton fabric and I want to make this out of waterproof canvas, then I can write down what I'm planning before I cut and I can make sure that I'm not duplicating pieces or cutting the wrong bit out by mistake. Um, so it's just great for planning out your bag before you make it. Now, it mentions cut on fold when joined. So what this means is that what we really need to do with this piece of fabric is we need it to be twice the size. So there's two ways that you can do this. You can cut it on the fold, or you could print this again, flip it over, and then join it to the original piece. So I'm just gonna show you how we would cut on fold. Okay, so I have got a piece of fabric here. Now, uh, before I actually do this, I always like to interface my fabric first. So I would iron this, um, interface it. I find then it kind of gets any shrinkage that's gonna happen out of the way. Now you can see here, this is two layers and it's got a fold on this edge. So to cut on fold, you simply place the cut on fold on that fold like that, okay. And then when you cut this out, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with a piece twice the size because it's cutting through the back and this center part is joined. So the alternative way that you can do it is that you can draw around your pattern piece and then you can flip it over like this. This is the way I prefer to do it. And you can draw around it again. And then you'll end up with your complete pattern piece. So the reason that we have cut on fold is generally because it will save you from printing even more. But again, if you want to, you could print the same again, flip it over, and then just sellotape them into one big pattern piece. So the only thing to watch out for is if you're using um, heavier fabrics like leather and cork, you probably don't want to cut on the fold because you don't really want to fold your fabric flat. And if it's really thick fabric, then the fold can end up adding a little bit 
to um, the size of your pattern piece if you're not careful. So when you come to using thick fabric, not cotton and not canvas, I would then recommend, yeah, drawing around your pattern piece, flipping it over, drawing around, and then cutting it out as one whole piece. If you want your pattern pieces to be more durable, you could consider cutting them out of card, um, or you could laminate them, or you could use sellotape across the whole thing to make it more durable. There's a few different options. The ultimate option, if you're making a lot of the same bag, is an acrylic template. So I'll just show you one of those. So these are the acrylics for our no sew tote pattern. Now, this is a bag that is made entirely of one piece and it was too big to fit on one piece. So there you go. It sticks together kind of like a jigsaw in the middle. So when we have large acrylic pieces, that's how the manufacturers do it. Now, the great thing about acrylics is it's like cutting up against a ruler, like a quilting ruler. So you don't really need to mark it. You can kind of just cut it straight out when there's nice straight edges. When you've got curves, you will generally still need to mark them and then use scissors to cut them out. But this does save a lot of time. They're really, really durable. They're great for fabric placement. So if you have like a picture on your fabric and you want it at the center of a bag, you can see what you're doing. Um, and if you have rivet holes and that kind of thing, then they will be marked in the acrylics too. So these are fantastic if you're making the same bag over and over, but they're expensive. If you're just gonna make a bag once, then they're not gonna be worth it for you. And in that case, you're definitely better off sticking with the paper pattern. Okay, so that's everything. Um, you can check out our YouTube channel for other videos on how we interface our fabrics and cutting tips, all that sort of thing. If you've got any questions about things that we haven't covered in this video, please just drop a note in the comments and we will try to get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching.